Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back again to our satisfactory 1.0 playthrough. In our last episode, we got, uh, what did we get? We got heat sinks, we got cooling systems, we got radio control units, and we got turbo motors set up. We really just have one more thing, which is the fused modular frame. So that's going to go right here, and that is made in blenders. I guess to make it look nice, I should align it with this blender blueprint, because that does look kind of nice. Probably better that way than kind of fitting it in there. I don't actually know. But uh, we've already got most of what we need over here because we already have the nitrogen, right? That's right here, so we'll have to bring that over. And then we've already got aluminum casing right here. And we bring that over. And then that's already two of the three things we need. The only other thing we need is the heavy modular frames. So I'll bring the HMFs um, probably right here. So that'll be a little interesting, won't it? Uh, I guess it's not too bad. I need to bring those down. Oh god, that's terrible spacing. Um, Okay, we can do this. So, bring those down like this. This is my pipeline. There's too many things happening. Um, right, but that's not, a pipe doesn't actually go there. That's just spacing. Okay, so then I need to come out further. This. And turn the corner here. There. Okay. And then we come up to this. Oh my goodness. Uh, with a lift. Verticality is a great thing. And then this comes over here. So the other thing I'm probably going to work on in this episode is rocket fuel and some more rubber and getting um, the all the extra heavy oil residue processed that we're making right now. I probably want that one to go on the top and the casing is right here. to come out and go over and then finally we've got nitrogen which okay with a little bit of spaghetti pasta here comes over here find out by connecting up the power. Wall power. Perks of being a wall power. Alright, here we go. And it's yellow. It's filling with all the things. Once we have enough aluminum casing, about three years from now. <laughs> Imagine having a whole bus set up just to spaghetti it in the end. I mean... Look, there's a li I I am not a subscriber to only straight lines. You know, like this rubber or whatever or the area between the bus and the setups is pretty pretty spaghettified. I still think it looks fine to be honest. I the key to the key to having a good looking base is not to have zero spaghetti. It's to have the average part of your base being straight lines. Some connecting spaghetti doesn't actually look that bad. 
it tends it tends to look worse when there's only spaghetti, you know, and there's no place for your eyes to kind of enjoy a nice straight line for a moment. That's when it starts to look a little worse. And when I say look worse, some people like that look. There is a very organic feel to only spaghetti, but it can be it can be a little rough sometimes. Um, now, fused frames uh, are also only used in the thermal propulsion rockets. So I think, I think they're used in nuclear pasta though. Uh, yeah, floor hole. So I am considering making an entire blueprint series on hidden, hidden belts. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to do it or not, but I, I might. I'm out of SAM fluctuators again. I should probably put those in an automated way. But for now, I've just been handcrafting all of them. But now that I have manufacturers, I could certainly automate this. I need to do it this way, and then I can do that. Maybe? Maybe not. Oh, it's too close. I see. Um... If I put it in just the right spot, it'll actually connect. Let's see if we can get that to work. Yay. All right, there we go. Fuse frames are done. We've slooped it. So now I'm tempted to use my last three sloops on... With the iron wire and iron pipe, SAM fluctuators are just iron and SAM. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and sloop some casings here. So, I think I'll just do the first two. And then I shouldn't need any more than that. Yeah, I wouldn't have enough aluminum ingots even if I was max rate. So then I just need to disable these. Um, if you turn them on standby, does that get copied? No. No, it does not. You actually do have to power them off individually. Okay. So that should be that. So now we're getting double our output. And then what else do we need to do? I think that's pretty much it. Is silica still the issue or what's going on with aluminum? Efficiency number at. That one's at 100. That one's at 100. Are they all at 100? Are you at 100? You are also at 100. Oh, okay. So I could then upgrade belt speed. Ugh, there's too many belts. Um, I really, one feature that would be really nice, I think it exists in Dyson Sphere Program, you can hold a button and it will like upgrade an entire section of belts. Obviously it's tricky because it would have to like 
follow splitters and stuff, but I'd be okay with that if it was like every belt that's attached to this belt, either by splitter or merger, you know, the entire belt network within a certain range, maybe. That would be very nice if such a thing existed. Okay, so it's Mark V past the assemblers. Um, and then it still won't get faster because I have six times 60, which is only 360. Six times 90 is 540. So, if I do another 90, that's 630, and another 90 is 720, which is then the, the max speed of the input scrap with a Mark V belt, which I believe I have Mark Vivified all these belts already. Yes, it seems I have. So then I think... I think, oh, it's not 720, it's 780. Oh, I can do another one then. So we're certainly gonna run out of silica, probably, before I have enough, but at least now we're not held back on scrap. probably be silica that will be held back on. Maybe not. Also, I can upgrade that well. Not that it should matter. I don't think I'm going to be needing 480, but you never know. So we should see this free-flowing now, the aluminum scrap. And it seems to be that that's the case. With no slowdowns. I guess it'll slow down as soon as I run out of silica, which is happening. It looks like it's no longer fully saturated, but... Okay, well that's at least making sure we're making use of all the silica that I can. Um, and I'm certainly getting more casings than I was before. So that's good. I'm guessing rubber is still the main issue that we're experiencing. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, rubber's actually backed up. What's up with that? That doesn't sound right. Interesting. I wouldn't have thought that rubber would back up. It must really be the aluminum shortage then. So what I just did should help with that. Cool. Things are actually running. That always feels good. Um, what about you? Are you running? Are you control units? Yeah? Cool, cool, cool. So, I guess we can do our research now. Our particle enrichment research. Yeah, let's do that. Almost out of rocket fuel. I think I have a little bit more in the depot here. Yeah. We're almost to tier 9. Phase 4 is going to go pretty fast once I start working on it, I think. Alright, so I need a lot of quick wire. Let me grab that real quick. That's gonna. I'm going to need to go grab some from the container. Cooling systems, 200 frames. I'm not, uh, I haven't crafted enough yet. And turbo motors. Okay, never mind. We're still a little ways away on the fused frames. And then all my quick wires over here, I think. Yeah. Quick wire. Grab another thousand of that. Now 
now we're just waiting on used modular frames. Yeah, I don't want those in my inventory. Or do I want an extra 33 turbo motors? So, let's see. Do I, I don't have the nuclear pasta yet. That's unlocked in this final milestone. Copper powder. Plutonium pellets. Oh boy. Yeah, we're gonna start getting into the real real crazy stuff soon. Um I certainly need uh, what do I wanna do? Let me just get the rocket fuel going. We're gonna have to do that eventually. And I think rocket fuel will be good for powering my drones for now. So That'll work. I'll set it up right here. Let me grab my hover pack. Um, so I have the heavy residue. I have water. So the first thing to do is blenders for diluted fuel. Um, and then... I guess because it's only fluids... Doesn't matter which way the blueprint's facing, for once. So that's nice. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space between my... Ah! Drone Depot in this. This is the problem with not having floor power everywhere. You can't fly where you wanna go. Same way. It's weird. Oh, I guess I need to just link this one over here. Alright, so there's that. Diluted fuel. These two alone can do 500 per minute. And then... Yeah. I guess water's gonna be an issue up here. I could always bring in more. I'm literally over some water right now. Like... There's water right there. So... I can always bring in more water if I need to. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I feel like for... For this, I am going to bring in... Dedicated water? Rather than using my bus water. I feel like the bus water is good for things that I need less water for. Like if I just need a little bit, like 50 a minute or 100 a minute even. But for this build, it's going to be a lot more than that. So I don't think I want to... I don't think I want to mess with that. And then I am going to unfortunately need to place my bus here so we can get everything lined up. <laughs> Bus water. And let me just make sure that's not too far away. Yeah, we're good. Look, there's smart water and then there's bus water. Bus water is where it's at.
Oh no! I just realized we have clippage here. The water's going through the oscillators. Uh. Um. You know, is it? Yeah, it is. I just, I'm not gonna look at it. <laughs> just not gonna look at it. Uh. We don't have to know. We don't have to know. All right. Pipeline. No. Conveyor pole, then the pipelines. All right. There we go. There's our residue. And then that'll come over. Would like to to line things up, but these don't. Oh, now you're snapping to something. What are you even snapping to? That merger up there, splitter up there, I guess. I don't even know what it's snapping to, but I'll take it. Um, I'll take it, and then we'll go underneath. So. Alright, and then we just need to bring water in to here. Let's do a half foundation. Okay. So then... Shouldn't be too bad. Just grab... Two of these bad boys. Overclock them. All oh, right, you can't copy settings for some weird reason. I don't understand that. Mm, you don't have to flip power, I guess. it and then put that up we'll get a mark 2 pipeline pump which should give us enough at lift I think 50 meters is enough here Yeah, they're just hardcore judging all the people who overclock water. It's just so much easier. Alright, now if I really wanted to, I could do like another half foundation right here. And then we've got Z fighting! Yay! Uh, no, it's not worth it. All right, there it is. Lots and lots of fuel. All right, we're gonna overclock these. I'll just go for 400, that's plenty for now. So I've got a lot of fuel, and... I need compacted coal and nitric acid. Do I have enough fused frames yet? Uh, I keep thinking it's in the search bar without clicking it. Yeah, okay, we have enough fused frames, so let's go get that unlocked. Make sure we understand the nitric acid recipe. I, I think it's just iron and water and nitrogen, but I want to know the numbers. We'll do that. Boom, boom. There it is, tier 8 complete. Milestone reached. Project part number nine, nuclear pasta, can be created in the particle accelerator. Nuclear pasta. The accelerator has vast and fluctuating power demands, depending on the recipe, so we'll need careful integration with your factory. 
Fix-It does not waste, so nuclear waste can be refined by the particle accelerator into plutonium for reuse in the nuclear power plant. Fun fact, Fix-It psychologists fact. suggest factory designs reflect the minds of their creators in unexpected oh, ways. Interesting. On an unrelated note, your infrastructural <laughs> choices have been interesting. Hey, my choices have been great. Don't judge me, Ada. Yeah, okay, so we need one fused frame and some RCUs for a pressure conversion cube, which then you particle accelerate a billion copper powder. And that's a lot of copper, by the way. Jesus. Um, it's six to one, and we need 200, so that's 1,200 copper. Is that right? I think that's, I think I mathed that right. Yeah, that's 1,200 copper ingots, assuming you're not slooping something per pasta, um, which when you have Mark V belts is actually not that much, but it sounds like a lot. Those are big numbers. And I probably will need to go get some more copper for that. Okay, well, we've got that in front of us. Phase four is still a little bit away though. Uh, let's see. For now, where's my new belt launchers closer? Now I just need nitric acid and compacted coal. So we're gonna need lots of little things. Do I have any, oh shoot, I think I'm screwed by iron. Yeah, I don't have any, I don't have iron ingots or iron plates. Nor do I have iron, like, right underneath me. Nitrogen... Uh, here. Okay, so it's four to one. Four nitrogen makes one nitric acid. One fourth? I guess a third of a plate per nitric acid. So yeah, it's a tiny amount of plates you need for rocket fuel. I mean, we're talking tiny. We're talking one third of a plate for 10 rocket fuel. So that's 30 rocket fuel per plate. That's 3000 rocket fuel per stack of plates. Part of me wants to just supply it with a container and call it a day. Um, like this would only use two rocket fuel per minute, I think. Oh, uh, the other problem is if I use packaged rocket fuel, then I'm using the package, packaging, which is aluminum. Uh, I forgot my water somewhere. Hmm. Um -de -dum -de -dum. Oh, also packaged rocket fuel is two rocket fuel, not one. I didn't realize that. That's interesting. It's doubly dense. Because it's like pressurized. Um, that being the case... I think I still have an empty slot on the bus somewhere, or two. This one's motors. That's not empty, it's just sparse. Very sparse. Uh-oh. Like, shouldn't we have seen a motor somewhere along this line? Like, why do I have zero motors? That's making me think I broke something. Oh, it's because wire is just that bad right now. Okay. Why is wire so bad? Because of reinforced plates? Probably. 
or encased beams maybe no those don't use wire uh they kind of do use wire yeah because of reinforced plates so yeah probably what would be best is Where's my wire coming from? Is it this one? No, that's copper sheet. Are these wires? Oh, I'm doing iron wire. That's what's happening. That, I was like, where are my copper ingots? Um, looks like I'm short on iron. Are these? This could be part of the problem. So, let's... It's always iron, isn't it? Alright, so full belt of iron ore could be improved to start with. Do I have enough smelters where it would even matter? If I'm doing 12 smelter, I mean, I can overclock, so yeah, I, I should just get more iron ore. So step one is Mark V conveyor belt. Build that to make sure we're good. Okay. So there's iron. here that that should help a little bit because here we've got 150 plus 150 oh this is a good opportunity for our newfangled mark three miners i guess we do have a need for them um i do need to make though one of these portable miners I really, I don't know. I don't understand the point of these things. Like, I don't understand the point of miners needing the portable miners. I don't know, it's just, it feels like kind of a pain in the butt. That doesn't have too much of a benefit, but whatever. We'll just make a few and that'll last us a while and then Someday, maybe we'll do that automated recipe and put them in a depot and be done with it. Maybe when I make a new mall for the old stuff. I don't know when that'll happen. If ever. Alright. So then, we go to production. Minor Mark III. Because we have supercomputers, turbo motors, and fused frames, baby. Oh yeah. Wait, did it just delete my shards or did it give them back? I hope it gave them back. All right, so what is that? 300 plus 300, gosh, on an impure node. That's awesome. So that's already 600 a minute. And then I'm pretty sure I'm getting at least 180 from over there, so I'm not gonna upgrade any further. So now we need to increaseify smelting capabilities if it's not already high enough, which it probably isn't. Oh, 75. Wait, what? 75, 150. 300, 450, 600, 750, 900. There you go. Um, I can take off a few, I guess. 900, I can take off 30, 
60, I need 120. That's 780, exactly. Okay. So there we go. Now we're dialed in for a full mark five belt, but now we have to upgrade the iron ingot belt. And they've done a lot for quality of life in this game, and it's far more doable than it used to be when it comes to big projects. But I'm really not a fan, like, yeah, of how difficult it is to do stuff like this. Like, upgrading a whole bus of Mark V belts in Factorio, I, I know there's not Mark V belts, but you get my point, it takes like three seconds. Use the upgrade planner, you have construction bots, and it's just done. And I feel like a game like this really needs the ability to do like a three-dimensional selection box to upgrade belts within that box or something, and you can just select your whole factory floor, you know, with a few thousand aluminum sheets in there, and like, I feel like that sort of thing would go a long way, because it's just such a pain in the butt to upgrade your belts in this game. I really, I really don't do it. Alright, well that should do it. I guess they're not used anywhere else anyway. <laughs> Factorio was QOL becoming a game. Yeah, I mean, sort of. I, they are different, different leagues. Um, Waskily, I feel like we've had this exact argument many times before, but that's just, that's not a good reason for a game to, to not have good features. Like, yes, of course you need to design around the game not having the ability to easily upgrade belts, because that's how the game works. But should it be how the game works is a different question, and to that I say no. Like, I think everyone would prefer if you could just easily upgrade a bunch of belts. It's more that, that there's not like an easy way for them to code that or for, for you to do it. it. It would be kind of janky. Like, I think they they don't want to make it just like super, I don't know. Like, I think they do want to keep the reins on, but I just don't think it makes it fun to build big when doing big stuff is more painful. Whereas in Factorio, building big, wait, was I not copying ones with shards? What happened? Did I run out of shards? Oh, I ran out of power shards. Time to go grab some slugs. Or... No, I have 60 more right here. I don't even know if I have... Each one is about 100. So I should be getting... Yeah, I guess we need to shard them all. To get up to... What is almost 800. Yeah, I mean, I guess my final point is like, it's not a good, it's not a good element of a game if people are having to figure out how to play around the jank, right? Like, it's like when you're playing Greg Tech New Horizons, like there's so many janky things that you have to deal with and that's not a fun part of the game. That, it is a part of the game, but it's not a fun part of the game. That's for sure. It's just kind of what ends up happening because of how it all works. Yeah, I, I think, I think that's, it's like, it, the game doesn't get more fun because it's hard to upgrade belts from Mark IV to Mark V. I just, I hard disagree if that's the kind of stance you guys are taking. Like, no, that does not make the game better. Because then it punishes you for using belts, which I think is ridiculous because the whole point of the game is like you should you should have the selection You should be able to use belts. You should be able to use a big bus with belts everywhere and like the mechanics of the Building being hard shouldn't make your logistics choices different Right, but they do and the point you guys are making is one. That's a true point I just don't think it's a good game design decision like, yeah, you do have to deal with the jank of upgrading belts, and that does make a bus a worse option 
but that's not fun. Like, a bus should be a good option, and it the d difficulty of upgrading belts shouldn't shouldn't make that a worse option, if that makes sense. Alright, we're almost there. Upgrading this copper. Alright. You... And I like, there are third party tools, or at least I'm pretty sure, you know, there are ways to like mass select belts in the like game editor thing uh, to do that. I guess I don't need to upgrade. Well, I might need to upgrade this one. This was the one that goes way over and I think goes to motors. But I don't think it uses more than 480. No, it doesn't use 480. I'm not gonna upgrade that one. Now, why am I still not getting most of a full belt? Am I that short on iron? Like, what's actually going on here? Okay, now it looks like we're pretty much getting a full belt. I guess we do... We do use a bunch in our stitched plates. So that's taking a bunch off of the bus already. But no, there's long sections here where I'm not getting wire. What's going on? Maybe I need... Ah, I think it's right here. Mark 5. Iron ingots. I was thinking the Mark 4 would be enough, but we're making plates and wire here. So if we're using reinforced plates, then that's consuming some of the iron that would be going towards wire. And iron wire is also not a two to one recipe. It's a, what is it, a four to, or five to nine recipe. So that's worth remembering. Is the iron flowing freely now? It is. Iron flow free, my friend. Yeah, Waskily, that would be an okay option if you could connect blueprints to each other without manually connecting every connection. That, that would actually end up being slower because to connect you know, if you build the blueprint, the blueprints don't connect to each other automatically, which is, again, another issue to building big in this game, I think. And and some people like the, I'll call it tedium, but some people might call it methodical or, uh, you know, uh, relaxing building of connecting 500 belts or whatever, but I find that to get pretty tedious pretty quick. So I don't love it. I prefer games like Factorio or Dyson Sphere Program where you can use effective blueprints to not have to click this, click that, click this, click that, click this, click that, click this, click that. That just gets old for me pretty fast. And I think Satisfactory has solved quite a bit of it. It unfortunately still has a lot of it. But me, me using a bus is not where the tedium's coming from even. The tedium, like a lot of the tedium came from just upgrading all the little belts between the buildings, which would be the case whether you have a bus or not. Um, you know, if I was using trains to move items around, it saves upgrading a few belts, but... And again, you shouldn't be punished for using a different logistics option because of tedium, you know? So it's like, I'm not complaining that I chose a bus. I'm complaining that buses are as bad as they are. Yes, I did choose that. And, like, I'm happy with my choice still, but I think this game could support, you know, large amounts of belts better, is the main point I'm making, which I think we all agree with. <sighs> so, now what? I think, I think things are pretty good now. I do need to hook these things up. Let's hook up the coal and sulfur, because we're going to do rocket fuel. I 
just, I don't need very much rocket fuel. So, let's, I mean, do I just want one assembler making compacted coal? Feels, maybe I want more than that, but it feels kind of silly to have three. That feels like too much. I think I'll just deconstruct the other two. And then, yeah, we'll just use the one. Because we can overclock it, too. Heck. I could use summer sloops. It is two summer sloops, but... Could. Alright, compacted coal. It's funny, it calls it an alternate, but it's not. It's literally just the recipe for compacted coal. Because you unlock it through the ma'am rather than through any of the milestones. So it's kind of a weird, like why, did, I don't feel like they should call that an alternate. Because that suggests there's a normal compacted coal recipe that you're not using, which is not the case here. It is an alternate to what? Okay, so we're bringing in uh, aluminum. The iron I'm still just ignoring. I might just randomly bring in... As opposed to just burning coal. But that's not an option. What do you mean? Like, my point is there is no normal recipe for compacted coal. So calling it an alternate is weird because it's not really an alternate recipe it's just it's in the same system that the game uses for alternate recipes so that's why the game is calling it an alternate is because it's just it's on the list but it feels like for the things where the alternate recipe system is the only way to get a recipe for it it maybe shouldn't call it an alternate in that case all right so sulfur and full and then we're gonna bring in, which one is the aluminum? Made out of, is it the casing? I forget what they're even called. What are they called? They're called empty fluid tanks. Uh, empty fluid tank. Oh crap. That's the worst possible option. I would much rather use all clads or casings. Oh, geez, that's so annoying. Um, right. No, I don't have them in drones. I have a drone that's doing nitrogen back and forth. I have another drone depot right here that I'm not using. But drones are just so it's so inefficient. I'm using all that fuel for what amounts to very few per minute if I do this. What I might do Hmm. Part of me that's like I could send I guess I could switch this over. Since I'm about to be using rocket fuel, I can just send the empty packages on this belt. And then I can fill them. Okay, yeah, that's actually probably what I'll do. So I kind of can just replace that once I get rocket fuel going here. So that's fine. Um, power. Okay, so coal and sulfur. are here and here. Up and then flat. 
bit nicer. All right, and then this one, we need the items to come over. Ah, not that. Here. Okay, so there's compacted coal. And turbo fuel is a refinery. What do I want? Two refineries? Maybe. How much compacted coal am I making? 1875. Yeah, probably two refineries. Making the turbo. Let me put my hover pack back on. Okay, so... And then we're gonna have a final blender, and I also need to make nitric acid somewhere. There's still a couple steps left here. I already got water, but that's to these. Okay. Um, so you're making compacted coal, which then goes... Did I build this backwards? I did. I always think the the front is the tall part, but that's the back. I also have the arrow backwards on this one, which I probably should fix. Okay, so the fuel will connect there, compacted coal here, turbo fuel will be there, and I'll put the blender here. And then I need um, a blender to make nitric acid. Maybe here. blender for rocket fuel and then we have to merge the compacted coal which is not too big of a deal okay so that one's gonna make the rocket fuel turbo fuel what's up g-man how goes it all right compacted Conveniently, we'll have a merger somewhere over here for the rocket fuel output of compacted coal. And then the fuel already in this guy. Wait, did I go up? Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. You come over here. It's up two squares though, right? Yeah, I must have accidentally done three. I meant to do two. Okay, there we go. So fuel is good. And then power over here. There we go. Turbo fuel done. Nitric, wait, distilled silica, what is that? I don't remember this at all. I must have selected it when I wasn't really thinking. Dissolved silica, 12 dissolved silica. Oh, that's interesting. That's a lot of silica. So then we get 24 quarts ends up making 27 silica and 15 quartz crystals. Yeah, that's clearly the way to do it. For just the cost of a little bit of limestone. 
and a lot of annoying water loops and such. All right, well, that's the long-term silica solution that I don't need to think about right now. Non-fissile uranium. Oh, that's the uranium waste. Right, right, right. Okay. Anyway. Um, so this is the one that makes nitric acid. And then this is the one that makes rocket fuel. And then turbo fuel be here. I know we're doing a little bit of spaghetti here. That's okay. I'm not too concerned about it. Wait, what? Oh, I thought it was on the other side. Oops. Mm. Yeah, there's just no power cables within range of that, so I'll have to make a two connection leap that. And then water. And iron plates and nitrogen gas. Okay. Well, nitrogen's easy. More or less. That's just over here. And the water's down at the bottom. So then we will set up two pipes. Hey, it's snapping. Oh, it's probably snapping to the splitter. That's what I bet. Will it snap? Hey, you did. Nice. It did snap. Go you. Good job. You know, snappy. building, I know, but that is how this game works, <laughs> especially as you get a little farther. I really probably am just going to go full spaghetti as we get towards the end. I feel like the closer I get to the finish line, the more I start really like giving up on caring about the cleanliness of my base. It's kind of funny. It happens in pretty much every factory game I ever play, so I'm guessing that's going to happen here too. As we see the finish line, we'll just be like, oh my gosh, if I just connect this belt like this, it'll work, and I won't have to do it cleanly. <laughs> Noodle is really cool in some scenarios and really ugly in others. I'm glad that it is an option. Um, but yeah, for like long pipes from here to there, Noodle tends to be pretty bad. Tends to not be the thing I choose. Okay, wait, 
which one of these is the gas? Because that should definitely go up. It's a little weird. That one is a straight line and the other one's like a elbowy thing. Maybe I should do auto for both. Now that's clipping now. Auto 2D. That actually is better somehow. Yeah, I like all the options. Okay, now iron plates. We are going to go with the simple solution for now. Sue me. go there's our first nitric acid and unless I'm wrong about something we about to make rocket fuel which is not our first rocket fuel but it's our first properly automated rocket fuel so that feels good and then out here It's weird it can't figure that out on its own. Because if you, you can go here, and then you can go up in, you know, two tiles or whatever. But it can't figure out how to do that on its own. I guess I need to go up two tiles, so let's do this. Puts plate into box properly automate. Hey, you know what? We'll, uh... We'll do the math. We'll see. We'll see how long it'll last. I'm probably going to put more than 600, though. Look, when something will last for 20 hours without any further messing with it, uh, I call that automated. You know, if it would only last for, like, one hour or even, like, three hours, that's a different story. But if it, if it would literally last for 20 hours without me touching it, then I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Eventually, I might do something about it, but being able to not deal with something for 20 hours is close enough for now. Um, rocket fuel. Okay, so yeah, how long? I need 10 nitric acid per minute, and that means I mean, I can just clock it 3.33 iron plates per minute which means 100 iron plates, no, 200 iron plates is, well, at three a minute, that's 30 minutes per 100, or six, at one hour per 200. So a storage container full, AKA 24 stacks, is 24 hours, exactly. And that's, that's if this is running constantly and I'm using 100 rocket fuel per minute, which I will not be. So that is more than sufficient, I think. Now, I do need to package the rocket fuel. So let's get that done. Um, I think an individual packager will be sufficient here. Yes, I can just power share. Oh, yeah, no, I don't even need shards it's weird that you can't shift click these back you can shift click them in but look i'm shift clicking and it doesn't do anything um i don't know what's up with that that's a bug a minor ui bug but it is annoying all right so then rocket fuel just comes up See, in this case i actually think noodle looks the best um Yeah, you can control click to do three at a time. And then you can control click single ones. But you. Oh, now it's letting me shift click them. Weird. That's certainly a bug then, because it's working now. And it wasn't working a second ago. Yeah, I don't know what was up with that. Okay, and then power. And then the last thing we need is 
the uh, whatchamahoosits, which I'm going to put on this belt. So then we need to go put the aluminum fluid container thingies on there. Or maybe what we'll do is we'll put them on this belt. It's kind of convenient that I have these two here. I don't even remember really why I did it that way. Because you only need one fuel. Maybe I was thinking the inputs and outputs would go in there. I don't know. Um, I know that's wrong for now, but I just wanted to get the belt hooked up. And now we can run over. I think it'll be faster if I yeet myself the wrong way and then turn around. And then all the way over here, we've got what we're looking for, these things. Empty fluid tanks. So I will put them on a belt somewhere. Oop the best place for them. Basically, I want them to replace packaged fuel right here. So then this would be a pretty convenient spot. Right there. So we'll just have them come above these Pipes. Just all the way across the world. From here, maybe? Yeah, that works. Um, and then we'll do a splitter. One goes back in, the other. This is nuts. I think I went one too high. I really need the hover pack for this. Okay. Alright, that actually should do it. And that's already all hooked up. And then... That belt makes you throw up a little bit. Perfect, it's working. It's working. All right, and then we'll just trash this. Moment. Until we see the good stuff. And that'll bring the packages, which then Package the rocket fuel, which then I need to flip the direction of this belt. Oh, that means my splitters are wrong, too. This is all wrong. Alright. That goes the other way. Splitter. That'll be the packaged rocket fuel. Now... It seems like we got all the fuel, but why do I not see any... ...of the things? I must have broken something. Or not connected it. I don't see any of the fluid containers. Hmm. Maybe it's just aluminum shortage? No. Surely there should be a couple getting through. I think. Maybe not. 
No, oh, maybe it is an aluminum shortage. No, it's not an aluminum shortage. Something else is going on. What did I do? Alright. I've got a million empty fluid tanks. Oh, I didn't hook up the splitter. There we go. That'll do it. Okay. Simple. Simple yet effective solution. Alright. Fly back over. And now I think we're all good to go. So then again with the splitter. Hook that up and that will fuel our drones. And then... Now we've got our own depot with rocket fuel forever. Yay! Sweet! Until iron runs out. Yes, that is, that is true. Um, speaking of, I'm gonna go grab a bunch of iron. Alright, yeah, yeah, I get, I get it, I get it, I get it. You guys hate that I'm grabbing iron from a box. I guess what I could do... I th uh, no, there's no iron right here either. Um, I was thinking I could just smelt iron and send it up over the edge like a barbarian. I mean, there is iron right there. I could smelt a couple of that and bring it up. <laughs> it's just such a small amount of iron, it's ridiculous. Especially, I could even I could even sloop it, and then it would last twice as long. I think it'll last 48 hours. All right, we'll just grab from the OG iron plate supply. Whole container. How much effort to actually make it forever? It would it would be enough effort that I could probably do what I'm doing now at least five times, and it still would take less of my time. So I think this is actually a very efficient decision. Because doing this now has bought me 24 hours of not caring. In fact, more than 20. We're at 25 hours. If this were to run constantly, 25 hours. So, uh, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. I did do that math right, yeah? If it's three per minute, I get exactly 60 minutes, yeah, per stack. So that's 25 hours of this running, and it won't be running constantly because I'm not going to be needing 50 rocket fuel packages per minute. Um, according to the drone thing, which it's going to take a minute to switch this, it's only going to be using, I will estimate like 2.2 per minute. So, yeah, it's not even 10%. So at this rate, if I don't add more drones, and I'm not counting my personal rocket fuel usage, which we'll get to in a second, but if we're not counting my personal rocket fuel usage, then that would last me not 24 hours, but 500 hours. <laughs> so this drone will run for 500 hours on that, on that uh, thing of iron, so uh, yeah. Obviously, I will probably add more drones, but, you know, it's kind of ridiculous when you think about it that way. I'm certainly not going to get 500 more hours in this save. I will probably use more rocket fuel for my own personal usage than that, to be honest. Speaking of personal usage, I'm just going to trash some random things here. Get rid of the hog remains. Random scrap. Random wood. Random four computers and single oscillator. And some silica stuff. Six wire. Four fluid tanks. A single frame. 56 circuit boards. 14 heat sinks. Eight rotors. Statters are interesting. I'll just put them in the depot. Because um, sometimes you need those for hard drives. But you don't build anything with them. So those are one of those weird things where it's like... Nice to have a little bit in the depot, but you wouldn't want to, like, automate it into a depot. Does it let you trash the sloops? I'm not sure. And I'm not going to try. I'll let someone else be the guinea pig for that. 
Now, what was I, what was I waiting for here? Mm. Oh, energy storage. Uh, I've already built a bunch. No, those don't require staters. Those require encased beams, frames, and wires. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what we're checking. We're checking on the drone. Eesh. Okay, here we go. Yeah, 2.35 per minute. There you go. Which is 4.7 actual rocket fuel per minute. Which is uh, just about 1 20th of what this can produce. So, there you have it. And the compacted coal is being recycled at a 50% merging ratio, which it won't be used in anywhere near that amount, because the amount that we're using is four for every five turbo fuel, so four fifths. And this is using six turbo fuel, so four fifths times six is about five compacted coal in and one compacted coal out. So it's only reused at a like one fourth ratio or something. So that one merger will do just fine. Yeah, everything's all set up. Nice, feels good. Feels good to have rocket fuel done and it will make ionized fuel pretty, pretty easy to do uh, once we're there. So that's why, that's part of why I did it too. And it just makes, it makes these things pretty cheap to fly. Oh, I am using a tiny bit of aluminum, I guess, but that's fine. It's a really small amount. Two per minute, we're talking. So. Now, I could put these in there with a belt, but this is a fixed amount. It's a closed loop, so I don't want that. Uh, no, Waskly, Ionize does not till tier 9. So we have to do the completing phase 4. Which is next on the list, actually. Um, oh, you're right. It is in the ma'am. I'm an idiot. I remember seeing that now. I don't know why. I mean, the problem is I need power shards. That's what was in my brain of like, it, it's in tier nine um, because you use power shards for it. And so I'm gonna wait until I can produce power shards. But you're right, we can unlock it now. Um, and I could make a few of them. To be fair, I do have kind of an absurd amount of power shards. Let's go see if we process our slugs, how many power shards we actually have. You know what we need? We need little catapults, like Renai Transportation for Satisfactory. If I could just build a little smelter here to smelt some iron ingots and a constructor to make some plates, and then I could just catapult them up there, you know? And then we could have a little catcher that would catch those iron plates for my nitric acid. That would just be so perfect. It doesn't need to be very fast, just a few per minute. Not even a few per minute, probably one per minute would be more than enough. Um, I don't think I have any slugs stored away. I do think we put them all in the, the cloud. So let's grab our slugs. This is still slooped. And yeah, that's 160 power shards right there. Yeah, train ramps and jumping trains. Exactly. That's that's what we need. That's what we need. All right. So for the ma'am here, because it would be pretty cool to at least try out the ionized fuel. I need 200 rocket fuel, a hard drive and 100 shards. All right. That's easy. Already got the rocket fuel. And the shards should come pretty easy. Oh, look, I have more fluid tanks. I'm gonna just trash those. Just trash them. <laughs> it's surprising it doesn't have Renai for its amount of sass. Yeah, it, it feels like Renai would be right at home. Like Ada talking about launching items through the air, just it feels like it would work. All right, let's, while that's working, what do we need here? We need 500 assembly director system. Also, can I say, I don't know how I feel. I'm a little torn 
I don't know if I like that blueprints can be selected here. Um, I almost feel like that should be a separate search bar. Because when you, if you have a huge blueprint library, which I feel like if I were to play this game for thousands of hours, I would end up with a huge blueprint library. It makes it really annoying to search for items if they share some of the same letters as your blueprints. Because then the just all your blueprints are clogging up these searches. So I actually am not sure if I like that those are part of the same search bar. Especially when you certainly aren't like, your desire to build a blueprint is never overlapping with your desire to search for an item in the codex. So, like, the fact that they share a search bar feels a little bit like these should have their own separate things, but they don't. Um, anyway, all that to say, what are we doing here? So, I basically need 500 of these, which mean, and I'm gonna sloop it, of course. So that means I need 500 adaptive control units. That's super easy. Um, I'm just gonna grab all the stuff I need from the, from the, whatchamacallit. So I'm gonna need 500 computers. Not bad. I'm gonna need 250 frames. I think I already did this math once. And then I'm gonna need like, what is that? 1250 circuit boards and wiring. So wiring I should probably at least semi-automate because 1250 wiring is going to add up. Um, I guess I could do this speed wiring. Maybe that would be better. 1250. Then I would only need like 300 of those. 12,000 wire and 600 staters. Um, okay, so that's assembly director systems. Not that bad. Kind of annoying with the wiring, but other than that, it's fine. Well, what's that other one even called? I don't even know what that is. Weird. It kind of looks like a sideways power shard. What are you? You're probably near the bottom. Not that one. Where is it? Uh... I must have missed it. Uh, what are you called? Wait. The thing I think should be in the game is in the game? What thing are we talking about? <laughs> what already exists? Okay, magnetic field generator. That's what that's called. So... Oh, no. I know that you can just go straight to the codex. I know that. But I'm talking about the the quick search. I don't know if like I don't know. I guess cuz the quick search, I like the quick search because it automatically is uh searching. But with the codex, you have to hit two buttons or is there a w I forget. One of them auto, no, here, when you hit Q, if you hit space, it goes straight to searching, but it doesn't do that when you go to the codex. Codex plus space doesn't go straight to searching. So then you actually have to click the search bar, which is surprisingly annoying. Does control F work? No, of course it doesn't. So yeah, there's some weird inconsistencies with that. Anyway, the magnetic field generator. I need 500 of them. And that means 500 control rods, so cheap. No, not even. We're slooping. So I only need 250 control rods and, like, I don't know, 275 or whatever versatile framework. Okay, that's so cheap. And then what's the other one? Propulsion. Yeah, we already looked at this. It's not that bad. 250, you have to do some modular engines. All right, that's not that bad. And then the pasta isn't that bad. No, it's really not, especially because we get two steps. We're only going to need 25 fused modular frames. Um, I just need to make a particle accelerator, and I need to make a bunch of copper powder. All right, so... Anyway, what was I doing? Rocket fuel? Ionized fuel? Something like that. Alright, take all those. 
Let me get rid of my yellow slugs while I go off and do something else. I, yeah, satisfactory on consoles. That, this game does not sound fun to play on a console for me. All right, here we go. Ionized fuel. Ionized fuel unlocked. The origin story of this extremely efficient type of fuel was so fascinating it resulted into a new joke. I will tell the most popular version. A cow, power slug, and rocket scientist oh walk into a bar. The rocket scientist wants a milkshake. And so transportation was forever changed. Any historical inaccuracies have been removed by the Fixit Department what? of Historical I don't get Interpretation. It. Maybe it's fine, I don't get it. Um, okay, so basically we just mixed rocket fuel with a flippin' power shard and called it a day. Um, and we get back quite a bit of compacted coal. We're already getting one for every ten. This is like another 1.25 for every ten or something like that. To the point where the original turbo fuel is only using about half... I might need to do two mergers just to make sure we're soaking up all that compacted coal. Um, let's go set that up real quick. All right, so I just need a refinery right here. fuel rocket fuel didn't really leave any room for this to die this is the way but we just you know get the spaghetti going and everybody's happy Very valid pipe shape. All right, power shards. Obviously, will be hand fed for now because I cannot automate them. You guys can't complain about that one. Um, and then we're gonna sloop it. Oh no, I'm out of sloops. Oh god, we're at an hour and a half for the YouTube video, but I can't stop now when we're this close to ionized fuel. It's just classic. How close am I to these things being backed up? Cooling units. Uh, we're actually very close. Okay. So cooling units, I will go ahead and pull the pull the sloops. And pull the shards. Turn this one back on. Did I get them all? I wish. Uh, no, I probably have about 30 total. Maybe a little more if I were to grab all the ones that I have sitting in things right now. Um, all right, anyway. Oh, if you sloop this, we actually have too much compacted coal, I think. This recipe saddens you because when you sloop it, you make 32, which shuts down the machine. Oh, yeah, that is actually really annoying. They should fix that. Um, anyway, how do I do this nicely? So the compacted coal... This will be. This will be that. We split. We go down. Oh, that's not good. Even though it feels. Oh, it did! It did! Oh, that's amazing. Alright, packaged ionized fuel. Done. And then the compacted coal. We're gonna have to bring it up above this whole mess. And we're gonna need. Potentially two mergers, so I'll put a merger here. I'll just do compact and pull above everything. Oh god. Yeah, that 
actually just kind of works. Beautiful. Oh, it's clipping right there. You kidding me? How dare you? How dare you? Goodness. Um. Let's let's make it a little better. Something like this. All right. That's way too high. That's done. Power is on the front, so sure, we'll just put it on that one. Okay. I'll feed it some power shards. And I don't think we need to do anything else. The rocket fuel is flowing. Our first ionized fuel is being produced. Beautiful. Yeah, I think it's actually gonna make too much compacted coal. So, I'd have to do the exact math. Let's do 16, 16 times six. So when we use 96 turbo fuel, we're making 16 compacted coal plus 40, that's 56 compacted coal for 96 turbo fuel. No, that's actually okay. Uh, we will need multiple mergers though, maybe a third step. One thing I could do is split this off and join that one, and then we have two steps, and then we're kind of 75% favoring. Uh, whatever, it's fine for now. This will break long term if I were to just let it run, though. But I just want to check out ionized fuel, so we're doing that. Yay! All right, and then the problem right now is this pipe means... We're gonna have an issue. We shall go around. Oh, sand fluctuators. Man, I really need to automate these. I've been handcrafting these since minute one. It's just so easy to handcraft them though. <laughs> and for a while I didn't have manufacturers, to be fair. But I do have them now. So my excuse is gone. Ionized fuel is in the cloud now. I did it right. No? Not yet? Oh, I didn't do that. But there we go. Now it's in the cloud. Alright, let's try it out. Big, big experiment. Oh boy. Alright, so rocket fuel is already pretty awesome. But ionized fuel. Okay, so it seems about the same as rocket fuel for maybe a little bit more even vertical acceleration. Um, Waskily, it doesn't fix the problem you said it would of sideways acceleration. It, you still get none. And this is, this is what feels so silly to me. Like, just lean forwards, Pioneer. Ugh, you just can't you can't move sideways but uh, Yeah, it's look at the bottom left like you get way more fuel um, Per unit 
in terms of thrust time. So now we're going to test ionized fuel versus packaged liquid biofuel. I'm guessing ionized fuel will win. And I'm guessing the amount of height we can get is pretty absurd if we, like, try to be efficient. I could already get way... This was my turbo fuel height. And we already beat this by quite a bit with rocket fuel. Is, it, is this slower than rocket fuel? No, that would be weird, right? Hmm. I'm actually feeling like rocket fuel might be faster than ionized fuel. Yeah, ionized fuel is slower. Interesting. I was hopeful that it would just be strictly better than rocket fuel. They did say it was slower. Oh, okay, interesting. All right, uh, let's test from this corner and we'll just fly straight south. Last time I went west and you go off the map, so we'll go south. <laughs> and I'm not slide jumping. Regular walking. Basically just maintaining level. Oh, I'm gonna fly off the map again, aren't I? Okay, well, if I get to that little tree, I'll turn, I don't know, to the right. Yeah, south was a bad idea. I should have gone east. <laughs> right, get to the tree, hang a right to the miner. We might actually make it to the miner. Pretty very close. Literally just barely made it on top of the miner. Okay. So then we switch over to ionized fuel. Get back to our start point. Yeah, I'm curious. I, I don't know if I like that the ionized fuel is slow. It's still pretty fast vertically, so like I'll probably use it. But I did like how flippin' fast the rocket fuel was. That was very nice. The rocket fuel already has a lot of air control when you're going fast. You, we already did a little bit of testing with that. I don't really need more than what the rocket fuel already had. So... It looks like it's going to be pretty similar to the liquid biofuel in terms of air sustainability. In fact, we might actually win over the liquid biofuel. Yeah. All right, I could have gone a little bit further. Sweet. Okay, so that's good to know. So then I can ditch liquid biofuel forever. That is nice. But technically, if your goal was like pure vertical speed, then you're still gonna be better off with rocket fuel. And yeah, the air control is an interesting thing because I'll show you when we launch off a of Mark V, and maybe it matters a little bit more with Mark VI belts because I haven't gotten those yet. Um, but like the rocket fuel can already turn you pretty dang quick, even slide jumping off of a, yeah, we'll show rocket fuel here. Even slide jumping off of a Mark V belt, which is, look at how fast we're going. You can still turn around. I mean, look, that's, it's not like it took me very long to pull a 180 here. Um, so I, I, I feel like you don't really need more than that. Like, I, yeah, I mean, you get half a second back or whatever. Tube cannons might matter a little more. Yeah, I guess I don't do hyper tube cannons. But yeah, this, this turns you around a little faster. I wouldn't say it's like, 
it's still not instant, but it's definitely better than the rocket fuel for sure. So yeah, if you have a super crazy hyper tube cannon, then this is gonna be a big difference. What still bothers me is that the amount of speed from a stop, it's a lot better. No, it's not. Look, it's still terrible. When you're stopped horizontally, all of the jetpacks are terrible. None of the fuels are better. They're all walking speed. Look. Walking speed. Ionized fuel. Walking speed. It Like, none of them are better at accelerating from a stop sideways. And I think that's really dumb. I don't understand it. It's like, I have this crazy late game jetpack and I can't even accelerate sideways to my normal walking speed. I mean, I call it walking speed, it's technically running. This is walking. But like, when I'm sitting on the ground traveling, I can't even get to that speed from midair. Like, it's just really annoying. I don't understand why they've done it that way. Um, I understand not wanting to give the player like a ton of horizontal speed while you're midair, but you would think that you would get upgraded. You know, like the solid biofuel and packaged fuel would be pretty bad. Same with liquid, but then like rocket fuel should be a little, or turbo fuel should be a little better in horizontal acceleration, then rocket fuel even better. But they're all just the same, which is basically zero horizontal acceleration. It's just enough basically that when you're jumping straight up, you can like land on the edge of a cliff. But it's not enough to actually get anywhere. And it's enough that like, it's, it's kind of annoying. Like if I wanted to go up and over this refinery, it's like, okay, I'll get up and over, but then I'm going so slow that I actually need to land just to crouch jump and then go like eight times faster. Um, so it's, it just leads to weird play patterns where it's like, wait, I have to land first, even though I'm already in air with a jetpack that can vertically accelerate faster than horizontally accelerate. Most, um, most games, jetpacks either have equal or better horizontal acceleration to the vertical acceleration. So that's where this game differs. Like in most games, when you can jetpack, you can go sideways as fast as you can go up, if not more. Um, but this game is weird in that you get basically zero horizontal acceleration. Then you have to start your jump with all of that horizontal. And then you keep your horizontal, assuming you don't turn like 180, then you lose it again. Um, but as long as you turn smoothly, you keep your horizontal. But it is also kind of weird. Yeah, if you stop, then you, you can't get it back and then you feel like you're just totally stuck. You're like a weird sitting duck, but on the Z-axis, you have all sorts of fluidity. <laughs> it's so strange. It just, I, I guess what I'd say is it feels like um, incongruent. Like you can go up and down so fast, but you're sideways is you're basically like in soup is what it feels like. And that just feels a little weird compared to playing a lot of other games throughout the years with jetpacks. Whether it's a good or bad thing, I don't know. It's, it's annoying to me, but maybe it's a good game design decision for some reason I'm not thinking of. But I would personally like a little bit of horizontal acceleration. Also, can we talk about how cool the blenders are that the color in the top is different based on what it's making? I think that's sweet. All right, well, we're gonna have to call it an episode there because we're at an hour and 45 minutes, classic YouTube episode. But we got ionized fuel, we got rocket fuel, and we are ready. What else did we do? We did fuse modular frames, so we're ready to work on the phase four completion in the next episode, which is gonna be awesome. If you're here live, we're gonna start setting up a couple of those things, and then in the next YouTube episode, we'll be working on phase four. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below for you future YouTubers, and I'll see you all in the next one.